Good morning again, Legacy. We are about to start our Sunday morning service. And I just want to welcome all of you that are in the building, those of you that are watching live. I just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. As we enter into a time of declaration, let's just put our minds and our hearts on Jesus. One of the things that I was reminded of this morning is the faithfulness of our God. I know each and every one of us, we have different lives, different issues, different worlds that we come from. But one thing that has remained the same is the faithfulness of our God. So as we declare this morning, as we uh, intercede, even on the behalf of our nation and our community, let's remember the faithfulness of our God. So Father, we bless your name. God, we honor you. We exalt you. Father, we thank you.
in the book of Psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. And they are the Psalms of Steps. In some versions, the Bible calls it the Psalms of Degrees or the Psalms of Pilgrimage. And it is thought historically that these are the Psalms that the children of Israel will begin to recite on their journey into the holy city of Jerusalem. And also, that these are the songs that they will recite as they were taking steps up to the temple. The significance of their journey up to Mount Zion. As I was in worship, there's many transitions that are happening all around us. Jade is transitioning today. We're about to send her off. Woo! As a people, we are in movement, or at least we should be. We should be taking steps toward our future. And it is important to understand where your gaze need to be locked in when you are in the steps and moving forward. The reason for that is that it's right in the middle where we lose it. Most of the time, we celebrate the end because we're a prophetic people. We see it in the distance. But it's when we start to take the steps and they seem unsteady. Yeah. When we start to take the steps and we thought something was supposed to happen that didn't happen or it didn't go the way that we envisioned the middle to go, that we start the slippery slope. But there is a people in Zion that know how to fix their days under God, right? Taking every step with their eyes lifted up to the hills from whence cometh their help. That is the song of ascent. Psalm 121 said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Listen, I'm coming up to Zion. I know that my steps are ordered by the Lord. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm going to sing the song of ascension and ascent. The song of my steps and my pilgrimage because my eyes are fixed on God. My eyes are fixed on where my help truly comes from. That's why David can say 10,000, a thousand on my left, 10,000 on my right, but I'm steady and I'm strong and I'm moving and no evil shall come nigh my dwelling. He understood the movement of his steps and the Lord said to me, it's time for a people that know the sound of a center, the sound of going up to Mount Zion, the sound of those that take steps with their God, that understand that every person, it doesn't matter how hard it is, because I'm moving, I'm moving with the Lamb, I'm moving with the Lamb, I'm moving in steps with God, I'm
is not time for silence. It's time to go up to Zion with a decided resolve that you are moving in the steps ordered by your God. You're not going to do it based on how you think it should happen. You're not going to do it based on your opinion. You're not going to move based on your understanding. You're going to move based on the rhythm of heaven for your life and what he has purpose. Slow it down a bit. Slow down the drums and give me sound.
life. I need you to lift your eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lift your eyes to him. All of my help, I'll lift. Come on, speak to your soul.
So you can ask the question, well, we've seen so many other people leave and they didn't get this, Jade must be favored, and she is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's not that. It is we honor the honorable. Nice. And if you are honorably taking a step out, then we want you to go with the backing of the whole blessing of, it, of the community. Right. And we've made a decision yeah. in this house even the dishonorable leave with our blessing. Because we blessed you on the way in, right? Yes. This house, we took the time to welcome you in, to have the prophets prophesy over you. And we're believing that regardless of how you exit, mm -hmm. God's blessing is upon you. This is a house of blessing because we are a house of healing. Amen? Yeah. But Jade has labored with us, hands to the plow, she has created a sound and released his grace. Yes, yes, she yes. has taught on our pulpit and she has served faithfully in this house. So Jade is transitioning to her fiance's church as they take, <laughs> as they take the journey down the aisle. Amen. So we're releasing you to him and releasing you to your next leaders and declaring mm -hmm. that everything that God is doing yeah. in you, there is a song and a song of ascension that marks your every step, yeah. which means that you don't lose focus no matter what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And home is where the heart is. You're always welcome home. sending you, releasing you, but you can always come home. I told Jade, she's still going to be a part of our music projects and whatever. Um, so, it is what it is. Um, our, our legacy health team, we say sometimes, you know how um, USA 21 says characters welcome? Yeah. Characters welcome. They're all characters. And so they've done all of the drama of crying like Jade is going to Timbuktu. <laughs> Send your hands to Jade. And if anyone has a word for Jade, actually, Lucretia, um, get the word of the Lord, uh, Pastor Lucretia. Get the word of the Lord over Jade. Um, Lift your hands to the Lord. Listen, here's what I know and I knew before you said it, and so I asked the question, Jade, how do you handle transitions? Because I felt your turmoil and I felt your, all of that. And so we're just declaring the settling of the Lord in this moment. And that even as you ended your journey uh, with us or your transition in this moment as you take steps. Uh, but the final declaration in this house was his faithfulness in the midst of your story. We're gonna continue to declare that God is writing the story yeah. and that you don't have fear in making the next necessary steps of obedience to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That there is clarity for you, that there are no questions, but even as you take the next step, he lights up your path as you move forward. You are a, a psalmist. And we break the background vocal mentality, right? In no way are you background in anything. So even as we release you um, to your future husband, we know that it is a co-laboring reality. You are a pastor as much as he is. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you know, you never know with the mask. So I'm like, that looks like Alex. But I ain't gonna be dumb and be like, hey, Alex, and that's not him. <laughs> um, so you are a frontline leader, is what I'm saying. You've been in the background long enough, um, but it's time. It's time for you to step forward that doesn't mean you, you, you know, grab a pulpit and whatever, uh, but that you say yes to the fullness of what God has placed in you.
right to the fullness and allow him to bring it out yeah. to its fullness yeah. because all of the angst is going to be present um, as long as there is a slight known on the inside of you I'm telling you that the settling of your emotions comes with a settling of I'm going to obey God in every single thing moving forward I'm going to become who he has called me to become Amen. So we're declaring right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Uh, first of all, we honor Jade. We honor her in the fullness of who she is as a vessel of honor. In the fullness of what you've called her to be and all that she has been to our personal lives and to this house. Every giggle that we've made because Jade made an off joke in a serious moment. Every... Right. <laughs> Every lesson that we learned when she uh, stepped into the fullness of the grace upon her to teach this word. Everything that we've experienced as she has allowed God to trumpet through her with the song of the Lord that became our rescue and became our deliverance. We thank you for the oil that I see you pouring even in this moment. Just receive it. We don't even have to put it, uh, pour it on you physically. You're going to feel the oil on your head right now in the name of Jesus. Lift your intercession for her in the uh, in, in tongues in the spirit. Um, we cancel the fear of being exposed to the elements and we declare that even as we are surrounding you in this space and in this moment with honor and with prayer you are surrounded as the mountains surround Jerusalem you are not exposed to the elements and you don't have to be afraid you don't have to be afraid of what the new environment will look like we surround you we surround you with grace we surround you with honor we surround you in this moment in the name of Jesus and we cancel the assignment of fear we declare that there's clarity to your future and even as we release you we release you with a full blessing the, the peace of God the shalom of God where there is perfect peace where there is nothing missing where there is nothing lacking I declare as your spiritual mother and therefore authority in your life that the shalom of God is upon you right now as a mantle governing your emotions governing your atmosphere the shalom of God there's going to be moments where you're going to feel like an island but it's not because you're isolated but because God is keeping you in his shalom the shalom of God as you acclimate yourself to a new environment, the shalom of God, as you maneuver through new relationships, the shalom of God, as you learn how to be wife, the shalom of God, as you learn how to be mother, the shalom of God, that you will hold yourself to a higher standard than you are able to achieve. We break right now that curse of false responsibility and perfectionism and we declare right now that there is grace there is grace for your humanity there is grace for all of who you are there is grace and you go but we release you to the shalom of god yeah 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 we release you to the shalom of god not just to a physical location and not just to a relationship, but we release you to the shalom of God and it will all make sense to you yeah, in the future. We release you to the shalom of God. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. You are fully furnished and fully supplied in the name of Jesus. Let the shalom of God invade you even now. Even now. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's gonna prophesy now. I'm just gonna lay my hand on your brother. Jade, I heard for you um, the 
Lord says that this season for you that you are entering into will be marked by joy. He said every step that you take will be a step of joy. You will stand on his joy. I see where also that um, what the Lord said to me about you is that this phase of your journey is going to happen very quickly. And this is exactly what he said. Tell her to brace herself for the ride. Because the journey for you is going to happen quickly. And I hear the Lord say that as a leader, you are going to begin to experience um, all of the, the levels of honor that you have given to others, even when they didn't honor you back. Even when they didn't say thank you, even when they didn't say it was Jay who helped me in this area. You will begin to see the, the um, effects of what pastoring correctly is going to look like because there are those that are going to come back to you and say jade thank you for everything that you have done for me i see where the lord says that there is going to be strength coming to you in the form of godly relationships there are going to be some people that are going to come and say jade i know how you go <laughs> but the lord says trust who i bring and you're going to know exactly who they are but he's going to release a strength to you and a wind like never before. It's almost gonna feel like you're floating for a season because it's gonna happen so quickly for you. But as you step, each step you take, the Lord says that you are going to stand on joy. And joy will carry you and lift you in this season.
and every time you wear it, may you be reminded of your days before the Father. Every time you look at it, may you remember that your time is precious and that he is heavily invested in you. We love you. We release you with blessings. We send you on your way. Spirit has walked through this place. When you know that his presence was here and probably still is. Welcome. Welcome to Legacy. It's the best group of amazing people. Pastors and members and of us you would find on planet earth legacy amazing people people that love people that care people that are concerned people who don't turn their back on you when the going gets rough they want to see you want to journey with you we are service people I want to say to us, don't get weary in your well-doing, in your service to the Lord. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. Continue. See, we can be apart or we can be apart. We can be a part of the work and the mission of God or we can be apart from the work. And the mission of God. Don't be like Jonah. It's a good story about Jonah. When God called him and said to go immediately to Nineveh because of some souls that are crying out to me, the wickedness is a stench to my nose, my nostrils. He said, Go immediately. Jonah went immediately, not to Nineveh. He got up immediately. <laughs> oh, he obeyed that. Go to Nineveh. He obeyed that. Are we apart? of the struggles and trials and stress that we go through because we decide complete disobedience, not partial complete. I know the person, the speaker that's coming forward, you're going to be challenged. Like Jonah was challenged, and many others were challenged. We're talking about rooted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about a, a, a settled condition. What are you settling yourself on? What fruits? What principles are you settling yourself on? You're going to be challenged today. Prepare your heart. Prepare the soil. Root. According to the plant or the tree, it's not going to grow on any soil. The soil of the heart is rocky and hard. You're not going to get this message. It'll be pliable. The soil be porous. Water and nutrients can go through it. The roots can get down. Yeah. So prepare your heart for the word. And as all the songs speak fragrance, saying, believe it. Believe is not just a state of mind, it's a state of mind with action. Yeah. You have to act on those things after you believe it. We are true disciples of Jesus Christ. A lot of us profess it. But after professing, there should be possessing of Jesus Christ and his principles. 
And after that, like our senior pastor said, there should be progression. Don't just settle to possess or to profess. Because Christ said in that day, he would say, I never knew you. You can't just profess it. Okay? So welcome to Legacy. It's an awesome, super holy Sunday. We had an awesome celebration. You're going to get a message coming your way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, prepare yourself for what's coming mine. I'm, I'm, I'm warning you. Prepare yourselves. Oh, yeah, I beg you to know. If I start now with you, don't worry about that. You're going to get my amen. I, I, I'll bet you on that. It's coming. Those online, I know you can feel us from here, man. If you guys were in the sanctuary, I don't know. I hope it's there. I hope Holy Spirit is traveling through the lines with you there online. And everyone here says hello to you. Facebook. Hello. Good to have you. Send out in your chat. Hallelujah, surprises. Hail everybody. We can look at each other and wink. Still can. You can greet. You can tweet. We can greet. You know. I don't think anybody ever would get their account suspended like <laughs> anyhow, let's, let's, let's leave that alone. Let's leave that alone. Amen. <laughs> So welcome, have a grand time, amen. So we all know the story, Keen and Abel. We've heard it in Sunday school over and over. Um, so I'm just going to read this for you. And it's Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, and it says, But Abel brought an offering of the finest firstborn of his flock, and the five portions, and the Lord had respect, regard for the offering of Abel. Right? And for Keen, but for Keen and his offering, he had no respect. And I started to think about it, you know, Gain was a farmer, and he was tending with the flocks and everything. And it was funny because the Bible says that God had respect for Abel's offering. Because he didn't just give him anything. He gave him the finest of what he had. The firstborn, no spot, no blemish, no wrinkle, nothing. And God had respect for that. Because Abel could have just given him any little thing. And I think that's how we are sometimes with our offerings. Any little thing. Just because. Just because. You know, I have it, so let me just because. But that wasn't Abel's posture. God, I would give you the finest of what I have. And he had respect for it. So as you're preparing your hearts, I want you to analyze, is this the finest that I can give God? Would he have respect for my offer? Now, I don't want you to just think about it and be like, okay, I don't have money, so I can't give anything. You see? I don't want you to look at it financially. What is the posture of your heart? Can God have respect for you as you're serving as an usher? Could he have respect for you if you're serving on the praise team? Could God have respect for your offer? So, <laughs> don't you can feel them pulling, me, pulling, me, pulling. Me. But I want you to really analyze it. Could God have respect for my offering? Jesus, can He have respect? He regarded, He honored Abel's offering. Can he honor? Can he honor the offering of your service? What is the posture of your heart when you're sweeping the sanctuary? What is the posture of your heart when you're fixing the chairs? What is the posture of your heart? Can he have respect for 
for your offering. And I know a lot of people, we tend to look at it, oh, this one is being blessed and that one is being blessed. But maybe God had respect for the offering. Just maybe. Just maybe they gave him the, the, the firstborn. Something without spawn. Mm. You know? I'm gonna go in my pocket, get a great look dog, and I throw it in the offering. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But that person who decided to have 50 cents in their pocket, and that's probably all that they have. But it's the posture of their heart that they gave it in. And God respected that. So let me see, I'm gonna leave you with this as we prepare for our declarations. Can God have respect for my offering? So let's stand and let's declare. We're going to declare from a place of honor. We're going to declare from a place knowing that God is going to respect our offering. On three, one, two, three. We declare a new day over our lives. God has given us access. Divine opportunities, new relationships, storehouses unlocked, multiple streams of income, wealth creating ideas, salary increases, bonuses, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, and resources to go to the next. Establishing the heavens and manifesting in our lives. This is our declaration. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give, everybody. adjustments. I want to take the time to introduce 
uh, our speaker, even though she's not um, foreign to us or unknown to us, but um, I think Deacon Cal was right when he talked about what you can expect. Um, and we know that every single time that she steps behind the mic, uh, there's never a moment that she doesn't challenge and bring us to another place in God. Um, but she steps before you uh, today in a different position, and though we haven't yet taken the time to consecrate her into it, um, which we will do formally, um, but when we installed the new pastors that joined the team, um, she was on maternity, and we wanted to make sure that she had that time uh, with her new baby and prophet of this house, Samuel. Uh, <laughs> But as she is coming behind uh, the pulpit in a new position in this house, I wanted to take the time to honor uh, Pastor Crystal as she comes to bring the word. And she is our new executive pastor in this house. I want you to stand up and honor her. Um, she was on the leave, but still very present in our community. And she is due honor in this house. in your sight. I declare that the word that goes forth today, it will go forth and it will convict. It will cause us to shift. It will cause us to move according to your rhythm, according to your word. I declare that every heart that is under the sound of my voice will be challenged today. I declare that we will be challenged in a new way and that we will reverence your word and we will reverence it um, by honoring it and by following through with the word that goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And uh, rooted automatically, you know, the teacher and me, I wanted to do this elaborate thing. And then God always, I promise you, every time I have an agenda, he comes in and he shifts and gives me something more so prophetic. Um, something for the moment um, that he wants to do and that he wants to see, say. And this topic, um, this can be preached for the entire year, just so you know. This must be planted and we must be structured in some good soil. We can talk about this. This, this is this. this in the word yes we read in this word of God is an action verb, um, and, and you're going to see why it's action, it's not a noun, because a root is a noun, it's a sub, it's something that is under the ground. But I'm talking about rooted where there is 
a movement. Okay. All right? And I want you to keep that in mind. This is an action word that I'm talking about being rooted. All right? So when we think about being rooted automatically, I think about um, being grounded. I think about structure. I think about strength. I think about standing upright. I think about the stature of a tree. I think about the stature of a person. But as I prayed, and like I said, the Holy Spirit redirected me. And he said, I want you to elaborate on the root being more so having a function rather than just standing and upholding. Okay. All right? And he took me to 1 Kings um, chapter 8. He was about to present his king to uh, himself to King Ahab. Now, Elijah, there, there are several things I want us to keep in mind as we go into 1 Kings, 1 Kings 18. And these are the points that we are going to spend, we're going to spend some time on, not a lot. Um, but here are the five points. Elijah was sent, he prophesied, he demonstrated. He had vision or now Elijah, he was rooted in the word of God. How do I know? that he was rooted in the word of God. The word of God counseled him. The word of God fed him. The word of God directed him and confronted him and it spoke through him. Now, the first thing that happened in um, first in First Kings chapter 18, after a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the land. I want you to say with me, when you are rooted in the word, there is an automatic sending. When you are rooted in the word, there is an automatic sending. I didn't just end up someplace, I was sent someplace. Because I am grounded, I am structured, I am rooted in the word. So every place that I happened to be, I was actually set. And if we start to evaluate our lives in such a way where we recognize the moments that A little love moment. Yeah. Be directed by the word of God. You better be rooted in the word. If you want an example of pollution, insects, or damaged soil. soil. Where are you planted? Say, so where are you planted? Now, That we um living up to the expectations that it has
expectation is the root doing its in that tree. That the root, let me just paint it like this. If the root is planted in any old dirt, it will manifest dirt. It will not manifest that which it is planted in. Listen, if a root is planted, listen, you can't plant a tree, and I learned this because I tried to plant a garden at home. You can't plant a tree in any dirt. There are certain soils that you need for certain plants. So if you plant this tree yourself, in dirt, not the good soil, you will manifest what you are planted in. And so we have this root that is planted in any older, so the tree that is manifested is the tree that is manifesting dirt. No life, no fruit. It is bearing absolutely nothing. So let's look at Elijah again. So we know that Elijah was set because he was rooted in the word. He, could, he, was, he had the ability to hear God. And God sent him with a word. When you are rooted in the word, there is always a word in your mouth. I want you to say this again. Say, he prophesied, prophesied. And, I prophesy. and I shall prophesy. Say, he prophesied, he prophesied. And, I and I shall prophesy. Here's the remarkable thing about Elijah. All right? Now, he went simply, based on what the Bible says, he went simply to tell King Ahab that the rain is coming, right? That's all we get in the beginning. Go and tell Ahab that the rain is coming. So, he went to release that announcement. But this dude, this prophet, is so deeply rooted in the word that one conversation with Ahab, there is a shift instantly. It didn't say, the Bible doesn't say that God said to Elijah, Go to Ahab, tell him the rain is coming and have a showdown in Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. But he had a conversation with Ahab. There was no script that he had from God. And in the midst of this conversation, things begin to shift. So he's talking to Ahab, and Ahab calls him basically in short version a troublemaker. You have come to trouble us, right? So Elijah says, oh, you want to go there? You want to call me names? You want to you wanna talk about my agenda like you're the one that sent me or called for me? I was sent to you by God. But you want to you wanna start calling me names? So here's, here's how this conversation is going to go. Since you brought up the topic of bringing trouble to Israel, let's talk about the trouble of idolatry that is existing in the land. You call me trouble, but you know, isn't it just like the enemy to get things kind of a little muddy and mixed up? He comes with the half truth. Yes, there is trouble. Trouble is here. You ain't lie but that. But you have some distorted view of what the trouble is and who has brought it. And guess what? If we want to use the word trouble, let's trouble the demonic forces that reign over this land. And let's deal with that idolatry problem that exists in Israel. See, I just came to bring rain. But the enemy always exposes himself and manifests on himself. And since Ahab 
with his big mouth, want to stand to the prophet of God and call him names. The prophet says, there is trouble, but let's talk about the real trouble. Okay. And we see that Elijah was able to do that in that moment. He was in based on the word of God. I don't see where he was given the word. And when you go there, make sure I have a showdown at Mount Carmel. Make sure you tear down the idols. Make sure you destroy these prophets. Make sure you show them who is God. But he has a word in him. And listen, there are some of us, we are in the midst of conversations. In the midst of conversations. But because the lack of word that exists on the inside of us, we don't know how to come back. We don't know how to fight. We don't know how to have a showdown at Mount Carmel. We don't know how to manifest the power of God that exists in our lives. The only thing we know how to do, if that was some of us, with that conversation with Ben Ai, all we could do is cower in shame. But well, Charlie called me a troublemaker. I don't know who you think he is. I'm a prophet. There is no word in you to fight back. God is not going to just stand there and allow the enemy to call you names. There's some of us that we are in seasons where we are bombarded and tormented in our minds and in our souls and in our spirits. And we've come into agreement with the word of the devil that has been spoken over our lives. What is the word that is to combat? Are you able to discern the enemy in this season? Have you seen the face of the devil? Do you know how to discern the voice of the devil? Do you even know when he is speaking? Elijah was so grounded in the word that he knew that Ahab had called him a name that did not belong to him. We're going to talk about the real trouble that exists in this land. I don't have time to entertain your name calling. We're going to address the real devil. We're going to address the enemy in this season. Like the young people say, and myself included, no long talking. Let's get straight to the point. No slapping up. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Sorry, I was behind. No slapping up. Oh, my God. Jesus. There's grace. When you are rooted in the word, you are always able to deal with the impromptu thing that comes up. Always prepared in every season. There's an armor that you wear that never comes off. There's a word on the inside of your belly that will always prophesy to the thing that the enemy brings your way. a posture. There is a word that goes forth out of your mouth. You don't have to be a prophet because you have the word of the Lord on the inside of you. That is what is required in 2021 and for the rest of your life. Be rooted in the word so that there can always be a word that will come forth of the, out, out, out of, out of, on the outside of you, that will speak and shift things okay. that surround you. So when we are faced with the carnalities, when the accuser comes our way, we can tell them you have a mistaken identity. <laughs> and so we see Elijah he not only comes with the word, but then we see later on in the story, he comes with demonstration. Can you say demonstration? demonstration. Say demonstration. demonstration. Listen, this is one thing that we need more of in the body of Christ. We blind seeing a death. I'm talking about the demonstration of love, the demonstration of forgiveness, the demonstration of 
of embrace. Uh, I'm talking about the demonstration of real deliverance where you can come into a house and those demons that plagued you one season ago, uh, they can't even step to you uh, in this season because of what is on this house. Uh, because there's an anointing that reacts in the, that reeks in the atmosphere that the demons cannot stand. That is the kind of demonstration that we need in the body of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Say, I am a fruit bearing tree. I am a fruit -bearing tree. Say, I am a fruit bearing tree. Fruit you lie. We live to plead it and defeat it. What is your language? Me included. We want, it sounds good to say I am a fruit bearing tree. I am manifesting fruit. Lies. No fruit. Let's get it together. Let's get it right. Living, defeated, defeated and depleted. Living, malnourished and impoverished. That's us. That's where we are. But there's a shift because now we are rooted in the word. Okay. In the scriptures we talk about, there's some scriptures I looked up for the good life in Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Is that a manifested word in your life? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Is that demonstrated in your life, in your thinking? The Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. I'll say that again. The Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. You know the rest of the verse. Is that demonstrated in your life today? You make known the path in Psalm 16 and 11. You make known the path to me, the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Yes. Is that demonstrated yeah. in your life today? Psalm 37 and 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Is that demonstrated in your life today? Jeremiah 29 and 11, we quote it, we, we, we recite it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Is that truly demonstrated in your life today? When you look at those scriptures and you evaluate your thinking, the manifestation of your life, the way that you speak, the way that you walk, the way that you give. I, do you always have a, a, a lowly continent? Is the joy of the Lord really your strength? Are you really lying in green pastures? Do you truly have a shepherd? You? We lie. We must be rooted in the word. In order to become a fruit bearing tree. Listen. Short testimony. I'll give you the short version. Because one day, I'm going to have to tell my story. I'm going to have to tell this thing. If there's one book I have to write, it is the process of childbirth and postpartum. Listen to me. Listen to me. Had it not been for the Lord on my side and Pastor Gia. Listen to me. If there's one book, it's that. After I gave birth to Samuel. I did, now I read about postpartum, and you know, I, in all honesty, I thought only a certain group of people get that. <laughs> Surely not me. 
I don't cry, number one. Mm. I eat overly emotional, like I don't get worked up mm. and like I kinda cold. <laughs> so I thought. <laughs> and I mean, you know, the first day I was good. It's bonding time. Day two, good, ready to go home now. So I had a C section so I couldn't leave the next day. So I'm telling my husband, you know, tell them you're gonna, you know, help me. When I get home, I just want to be released. I will go home. And I went home. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> now, my postpartum, I, I loved my baby. It wasn't towards him, it was towards myself. I cried, and he was colicky. So there were moments where he was crying the same time every night for at least an hour or two, and there was nothing I could do to comfort him. Absolutely nothing. He just hollered. And Pastor Gia wrote me, and I just cried. <laughs> it's like she knew exactly when that thing would kick in, and my God. And I'm talking about it wasn't just crying the emotions that came with it. I'm talking about thoughts that I had 40 years ago, feeling about myself, just feeling like I was nobody. My husband didn't know what to do. All he could do was just love me in the midst of it. I, I felt like I was fighting for my life. Pastor Mary, Jesus. I call her hollering. I, I, I can't do this. And in that moment, I realized, you know, it's important to be rooted in good relationships. It's biblical. And, and I know that, yeah, we can pray and what's not and all that, that's good. But there are real moments, medical moments, yeah. that relationships will help you get through. Yeah. And it was those relationships that caused me to push. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know what that was. And I had no control over it. Mm -hmm. And though it was medical, there was a moment where the enemy used that moment to bring, I mean, stupidness, suicidal thoughts. And, and here's how the thought, the suicidal thought came. It came subtle. You know, you was a, you're a mess. They'll be better off without you. It wasn't a plan on, this is how I'm gonna kill myself, but just the fleeting thoughts, they could be better because you're just a mess right now. And it had it not been for those relationships around me, I would have I, I, I would have drowned in that moment. Mm -hmm. You must be rooted in good relationships. Yeah. Godly relationships. Yeah. And relationships that are anchored and rooted in the word. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. People who know how to pray you through, okay. walk you through, mm -hmm. right. and sometimes just listen and not talk your business. Mm -hmm. yep. Let me tell my, give me a chance to tell I'm my fine, story. I'm fine, I'm fine. Let I'm me tell it. I'll tell it. Give me a chance. Yeah. I, I, I learned that in this journey. Like I say, if it's one book I can write, it'll be that. And and like looking at it now, I understand. Like you, when I was growing up, you didn't hear people talk about it. But now I understand what was happening to my mom when she had my sister, because she would cry and be cranky and miserable. But you know, just think that's mommy, mommy crazy. But like now, it's like oh, that's what that is. My God. Anyway. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He truly is a gem. God bless the husbands. And that doesn't have to be everybody's journey. Not every, every it affects people differently. Um, I was expecting it. I thought I'm gonna thought like, you know me, I don't that ain't that ain't for me. But I have a testimony. I have overcame. I've overcome everything that the enemy has thrown my way. All right, so being rooted in the word comes with definitely demonstration. It comes with a manifestation of that word that is in you. And I, I wanna, I wanna go. I wanna talk um, briefly about the fact that. Elijah was not only, um, he not only was sent, prophesied, and demonstrated, but he had a vision. He had a vision um, that not much people have or had in that time. Um, when he was, so we see that the, the whole showdown at Mount Carmel, I'm going to skip through that because of time, but we see that the whole showdown at Mount Carmel, where Elijah basically tells, um, you know, the false prophets, he, he says that he, he, you know, do your, he gives them preference, you choose your word, you do your thing, I'll just stand by and wait, and he begins to mock them. And the showdown with the fire from the sky, that was good. That was amazing. That was awesome. But you know what part had me? The part that I parked on with demonstration, rooted in the word comes with demonstration. But it also comes with annihilation because Elijah, like a real prophet, he not only calls fire down from the sky and we have a big showdown of who God is but right now we are about to annihilate every false voice that has gone over this nation and he lines them up one by one by one and here is what he said I feel this in my gut. I feel it in my stomach that we are in a season where we are going to line up the false voices, the voices of the false accusers, and it's time to annihilate in the spiritual realm. It's time to chop them off like never before in this season. They have been prophesying and speaking over your life far too long. It is the season to silence them like never before. Because the prophet said, fire from the sky ain't enough. I want y'all to shut up. I want y'all to shut up like never before. Y'all will never prophesy into another season. You will never speak falsely into someone else's life again. Because today you have reached the end of your journey. Are you ready to annihilate? Are you ready to annihilate the false voices that has gone up on the side of you that has tried to prophesy your next? That have tried to dictate to you that their way is the way that your life will end up. Listen, we have been in a season and over this house, it ain't no secret. We have been fighting curses left, right, and center. But I say the day that the day has come when every false voice will be annihilated in the spiritual realm. And we've come up against them. And we have declared that no more. It ain't enough for you to see the glory on this house. It ain't enough for you to see the presence of God in my life. It ain't enough for some of them bold. And some of them will be quiet for a moment. And they will respect. But then they want to get riled up again. So Elijah said, line them up. Your season is over. Your season has come to an end. You shall prophesy no more. As a matter of fact, you will prophesy lie no more. You have run rampant with your words far too long and your time is up. 
I had to park there when I read it. I said, you know, I, I think it's a, we, 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 we glorify the fire from the sky and rightfully so because God showed up and he demonstrated his power. But in that moment, I saw a prophet executing the false voices around him that has run this country rampant for years and years. And he said, no more. There had to be an annihilation. There had to be an execution that took place after the demonstration. Don't you just release the demonstration and do not war over that thing. You better war, you better war. You better annihilate the voices that will try to come up against it again. You better war. You better fight. Because that moment, it's easy for Elijah to sit back and gloat and say, Oh my God, you showed up. You showed up in such a mighty way. You caused fire come from the sky upon the wet wood. Oh my God, what a miracle. But he said, Uh-uh, that ain't it. My work is not done. See, See, the, my, the demonstration was to increase faith. To bring the people back. Look to the hills. From where it's come your help. But the annihilation was necessary to sustain the shift that had come. That's how we war. You don't just demonstrate. You war. You annihilate. carry that in this season. We demonstrate, but we also annihilate. We forget about you, devil. We will silence you at every corner, at every time you open up your mouth. Listen, we, listen, dead. There's a cartoon that Micah used to like to watch when she was small, and the woman used to say, off with their heads. <laughs> Let's chop the head of the serpent in this season. It's annihilation time. This ain't the season. This ain't the season to play. We got some things we got to recover. We got some things that we got to reclaim and possess. If you plan on sitting back and just being a church member, you're going to miss out on the blessing. Listen, God said at the beginning of the year to me, this is time to possess the promised land. But there is a movement. He's not going to throw it in your lap. You better go get it. And when you go get it, there's going to be a fight. When you're rooted in the word, it causes you to have vision. Thy word, once again, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It's so powerful. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Elijah sent his servant, his assistant, whatever you want to call it, he sent him seven times. Seven times. The man could not see what the prophet saw. And when he did finally see, he saw something that was so small. He said, I see a cloud, but it's only the size of the hand of a man. Far out. Go and tell the king to move quickly. Move quickly. You will hear me say, it's a small cloud. I said move quickly. Listen, there are some things that have been prophesied to you uh, and you don't even see it. You've been looking, you've been searching, you've been digging in that journal and you said, but didn't she say and didn't he prophesy that this will happen but oh, Shaman Dara Messiah. I want you to look one more time. Oh, I see something thickly like it. Oh no, you better move quickly. You better move quickly. 
three. You better prepare like never before because there are some visionaries that are on the loose that have seen that which has been prophesied. The Lord didn't set me here in vain. I told you, I told you at the beginning, Elijah was sent. He was sent by the God that said, let there be light and there was light. He was sent by the God that separated the day from the night time. He was sent by the God that parted the Red Sea. Did you think that I will send you? Do you think that I will send you? Do you think that I met Sumandara Mandela Usaya? Do you think that I will send you? And I will not cause there to be a shift in every area that you are sent. You better honor the assignment. Honor the sending. You have been sent for such a time as this. Where are you planted? Where has he sent you? Where has he planted you? There is a vision that he is bringing back to the body of Christ. There is a vision that he is bringing back to the ones that he has sent. And they will sit. The Bible says that Elijah, he pushed himself. He sat on that hill and he put his head between his legs because he had to humble himself. He said, God, you will not bring me to shame. You sent me to prophesy that there is rain. So I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to lay lonely until I see the rain. But no, here's what we do. We whine and we complain. And instead of sitting and posturing ourselves to receive the prophetic word, we back back. We back back and we say, Oh God, you ought to put me to shame. You promised me this from years ago. So I'm going to exit this room and I'm going to go to this one because you take me too long. Everything in due season. Shift your posture and allow the, the prophetic word to manifest. I say shift your posture and allow the prophetic word to manifest. It's not going to come because you ain't posture right now. You ain't sitting. You haven't humbled yourself. You haven't prayed enough. You haven't dived in to that word. The Lord says I'm still trying to convince you that the rain is coming. That the rain is coming. That the rain is coming. The rain is here. The rain is here. You see, when Elijah said to him, the seventh time, go look, go look, go look, go look. Because it's coming. And the minute he saw, small cloud the size of the hand of a man I'm talking about the big sky and in that big sky he saw a cloud the size of the hand of a man and with that word with that word that there is a cloud the size of the hand of a man Elijah said, run and tell Ahab, go quickly. Because God is about to send the rain. As a matter of fact, I repent. Because God sent the rain. The rain was there. Sometimes you got to posture yourself to have a different vantage point. Sometimes you got to posture yourself right. And Elijah recognized that his posture needed to be in a, a posture of prayer. He was praying. I want you to believe that every time he said that man to look, he prayed even a little bit harder. I didn't say he strived. I said he prayed. He didn't have to strive because God had spoken. 
that wasn't his word. That was the word speaking. When you are rooted in the word, there is a vision that cannot be hindered. You cannot be blinded because you are so rooted in that word that it shall be visible. Consistently, continuously. When you are rooted in the word, it brings forth the rain. The nation had been in harvest and in famine. They had been in a state of lack, barely getting by. And God sent the prophet to say that the rain is here. But before the prophet releases the rain, Elijah had to deal with the idolatry that was in the land. I didn't just come to bring the blessings, but I came to bring the posture to receive the blessings. There's a posture that has to be evident on the inside of us. I didn't catch all of Pity's word um, last week, but I know that he said something about, I think it was the bamboo tree. And there is a work that is being done underground, in the root, before there is a full manifestation of what was taking place. Let God deal with us in the underground with the world. Let him deal with the root of us. Let God deal with the root of us so that there can be a tree that is a fruit bearing tree. And when we shout the next sign that I am a fruit bearing tree, it is evident. It is demonstrated. When we are rooted in the word, it's not only for us, but it's for our nation. Because of Elijah's posture, in that moment he was sent to a nation that was in need of his voice. He was sent to a nation that was in need of his prophetic utterance. The authority that backed him up, they needed.
we submit to every word that you have spoken over our lives. And Father, we repent where we have strayed, where we have doubted, where we have gone far from your word. And we say, manifest the word in us again. Manifest your word in us again and we posture ourselves to receive the rain. We posture ourselves to receive the rain. And I call forth the rain over this house. I declare that every umbrella that is up in the spiritual realm that is blocking us, that is blocking the rain from soaking us today. I dismantle it now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that we are soaked. Right. 
for you to show down against the enemy, you have to say, this accusation doesn't come against me anymore. That we silence, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So this is not about people. It's about the realm of the spirit and the accusations of the enemy that you personally keep bowing to. The devil already called you that and you saw that you were different than what he said. Why are you listening to what he has to say about you right now? It's time for you to tell him to shut up. What good time? What good time? Silence the voice of the abuser of the brother and declare that you're going to stand in who you are and who God says that you are. But right now, there's an acceleration. And listen to me. As we accelerate as a house, there's acceleration to you. So as you move and as you partner with this house, there's acceleration. What that means is when God puts it in fast pace for us, he puts it in fast pace for you. Your businesses are going to grow. You're, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to put your hands to the plow concerning ideas that God has for you to accomplish. And what's on the house will rest on you and will rest on what you build. And so we declare that he saves and sends prosperity now over this house in the name of Jesus. You're going to pray into it because you are in the full mantle of your prophet office in this moment. And so God, we thank you. Come on. Five years, five years, five years, five years, five years. Five years. Five years and we're going to see God do through this house what we never even imagined. Five years and we're going to build a community center. Five years. Five years. And we're going to impact this nation like no other place has done. And it's not about boasting. And it's not about look at us. It is about the kingdom of God because legacy is necessary. Legacy needs to be in the ground concerning the generations to come. And it is time for some cycles to be broken. Five years and we're going to raise up politicians out of this house that are going to do a work to overturn the years of poverty in this nation. Five years and we're going to raise up pastors and leaders and prophets that are going to set the trajectory for what this nation experiences in its legacy. Five years we're going to overturn the generational curses that have been plaguing your life. Five years we're going to see it. Five years we're going to stand in it. And if you believe it, I see it, but we got to run. I see it, but we got to run. That means we can't casually run a hold of the vision in this house no more. That means we don't get to, we don't have the privilege of not working harder than we've ever worked before. Because sometimes we want God to do the thing, but we don't want to do the work. beauty of it is that when he began to run, there was supernatural grace that backed him into it. The beauty of it was that he wasn't going to be brought to shame. Because if he said it, we can believe it. Because he is a man of his word. Because he is Alpha. And because he's Omega. And he's in the middle. <laughs> he is faithful over all I want you to lift up your voice as Pastor Crystal comes back and leads us into a new level of intercession. When you do it, listen, let me say this. We are never, ever going to be a house that tells you to violate your individual purpose for the sake of our corporate, corporate purpose. Never. I believe that it can exist simultaneously. This is why we send it. This is why we release with blessing. Because we are here to train and equip that some of you were releasing out, some of you were releasing in, some of you were releasing both. You're gonna be lifted up here and you're gonna begin to have impact out there. Some of you were sending back to another nation. Right? We've sent out of this house and I believe that we're gonna send again. In the same way that we sent Arnika to China. In the same way that we sent Dwanisha to, to the Netherlands. No, to uh, London. 
We're about to send somebody else. It's for education, but they're also there for a purpose. And I believe we're going to send missionaries out of this house, back them up financially, and have them do a work overseas. We're going to, we are ascending house. So you don't have to be afraid of putting hands to the plow for the vision of this house because we will never violate what God has for you. Let me remind you, I've kicked people out of this church because they were more committed to me than they were to the voice of God. Not in a mean way, she's still my spiritual daughter, but God said, to me concerning one of my spiritual daughters, she was to go serve under Dr. Miles Monroe for a season. I did not know that that was going to be his last season, but I knew that she needed to receive something. And God came to me and said, she's being disobedient. I said, why? He said, because I told her to leave you a long time ago, but she loves you too much to leave you. So I called her into a meeting. I said, did God tell you to leave this house? She said, yes. I said, where did he tell you to go? Be a friend. I said, why didn't you go? Because I love you too much. I don't want to disappoint you. I said, you will be the first person that I kick out of my church because you're not going to love me more than you love him. And you're not going to obey me and try to be connected to me while you are disconnected from him. It's not going to happen. Get out. We'll bless you on the way out. Go ahead and be obedient to God. She's still a part of my life. We still talk. She's still my daughter. I'm still her mother. But she's in the season that God wants her to be. And this is the kind of house that you are a part of. So you don't ever have to be uh, afraid to be trapped in the system where churches go uh, crazy because you say my season has changed and now you are in rebellion and you are a devil. And oh, it's not going to happen here because we have a responsibility to build this but also to build you to, to raise this up but also to raise you up to send you as we are sent here's the deal before pastor crystal comes you don't have time to deliberate whether you're going to obey all of it you don't have time. You're no, you don't have time because the movement is quick. The movement is quick for what is up ahead. The movement is quick. God needs you to make a decision to be a part of the story in this moment. And I'm not just talking about part of the story of this house. Be a part of the story that he is weaving through your life. You need to get off of your butt and run. It's time to run. It's time to run. Lift it, lift it, and you bring it in.
bring a new rain upon you and your season. And right now we lean into that word. And we say let it rain. 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 Let the rain flow like a river over us. I prophesy over you that you are in your moment of green pastures. I declare that even if you have been one that has lost your job, I hear him say, dance in the rain. You are in the rain. You are in the rain. You are in the rain. I don't care what job you have. I don't care what decrease in pain that they are doing now. I hear the Lord say that you are in the moment of rain. You will not lack no thing. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not lack. The Lord is your shepherd and you shall not lack. I prophesy over your season and I declare that you are in a moment of abundance. I declare that you will lack not one good thing in this season. I declare that this house is built upon the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. I prophesy in agreement with Apostle Medi that in the next five years, we will build exactly what is needed in this nation and in nations. We declare it in the name of Jesus and we seal it. Lean in to the prophetic word. Lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in to the prophetic word. All right. What a day. Happy birthday to Minister Rhea and Gerda. We love you, ladies. We celebrate you. Um, we are so thankful that you were born and we get to celebrate you. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Gerda. We love you. Um, let us just close out in a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the word that has gone forth. We thank you that it has gone forth on good soil. Good, 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 good soil. I declare that we will be a people from the day forward that will lean into the word of God and not back back. We will lean in like Elijah into the word of God until we see the abundance of rain. We thank you for your word. We declare divine protection as we go to our homes and our families and cover us with your blood. In the name of Jesus, amen.